Hello again. This is to record the aftermath of this, which really ends here. Anastasis dies in 518, and taking over from him is a guy named Justin the First. Justin the First wants to go back to the Council of Chalcedon, which Anastasis had destroyed. He actually destroyed the documents of the Council of Chalcedon. Justin number one wants to revive it. Revive it. Now what makes that so important to say in this context is that John, by benchmarking here and here, is showing you how this anaphoric center closes. It closes with a revival. It closes, technically speaking, with a revival of time. In other words, Paul won the first 490 from Christ's birth and from his death. We know that from 2 Timothy 4, 7, and 8. And therefore, he's showing you how that ends. And he's also saying that somebody else during this same period of time, somewhere between here and here, or maybe even a little bit before, um, somebody else besides Paul, because you have to fund the second during the first, spiritually matured enough to extend the time grant. Now, who is that? We won't know till we're dead and we're seeing Christ at the, you know, Revelation 4.1 is the rapture. Um, door open, that's when we go up to heaven, door closed, that means, you know, it's the history is going on down on the earth, but we're not there. So, that's when we'll know who this is, but John in particular is benchmarking it based again on when he writes, and he's also concatenating the ruler with it. Like here he concatenated Zeno's death and Anastasius. Anastasius, remember, means resurrection, reborn, next one. So that's why he's playing on the time grant. Did John personally know that this wit about the name of the guy who would be ruling? I don't know, but God sure knew it. And so God had him write this. Okay. So at the time that, that the resurrection of the 490 is going to occur, a guy named Resurrection comes to the throne. Alright? And then you have this little 30 year window because there's a 490 measure from Christ's death also. I thought that was the only one, but Paul in Ephesians 1.3 uses it from Christ's birth also. So for those few pastors who thought that there was a new dispensation at Christ's birth, well, this is your confirmation that, that it is. But there's also a new dispensation from Christ's death. Okay, which everybody knows. You know, they're, they're looking at Pentecost 30 AD as the beginning of the church age. So, John is benchmarking both of them. And here, just before the 526, in 518, is when Anastasius dies and Justin the first comes. Justin the first reverses, get the play. He reverses to rebirth the Council of Chalcedon, which Anastasius at death revoked. Okay, if you read that dissertation, remember? Oh, is it not, is it not gonna? Remember I talk, told you, read the dissertation here? If you read that dissertation, you would know about that. Okay, because she traced it out. Fiona Nix, it's in her chapter 4 of her dissertation. So, Anastasius, resurrection, is dead. And this guy, therefore, aims to resurrect and reverse everything Anastasius wanted. By resurrecting the Council of Chalcedon, whose documents were destroyed. But, of course, you know, Rome would have a copy. Which means it's a turning back to which means it's a turning back to Rome in Italy. Alright? So, that's what's so trenchant about the wit here, the satire. 
looking at or beholding, paying attention to is a better phrase. The beast that this and and I'm going to cover what hoti means in a minute because it's a really biting wit was so just simple simple translation looking at the beast that was this is what Justin is doing he's reversing Anastasius which didn't want to look at the old beast in Italy anymore wanted to chart his own course and stay friendly with his Monophysite brethren in the south of Eastern Rome Eastern Rome occupied you know pretty much what we would call the Middle East and he and they were mostly Monophysite which is the definition of Christ that he was one nature and somehow magically the Godness is in there alright whereas the Council of Chalcedon said Christ is two natures in one person and if you didn't believe that you were a heretic and you should die your property should be confiscated and all of your books and Bibles and everything should be destroyed okay so this argument continues it renews only on the opposite side now okay Justin the first who was at that time age 70 himself he's an old man coming to power and his nephew Justinian the first is in effect taking the reins of government at that time he's fairly young I think he was born in uh, 482 all right I'm 63, so I consider that young. So, Bleponton Tonterion Hoti, I'm going to cover this now. Ain, ain, really. You have to, ain. All right. Paying attention to the beast that was. Okay, but Hoti doesn't just mean that, Hoti means because. It has two meanings that are used in Greek and both you know, like equally. Koti introduces content. Okay, so what is he's telling you is that they were paying attention to the beast and the content of what they were paying attention to about the beast is that it was. They're focusing on what was. They're going backwards they're looking backwards they want to restore what was backwards okay that's the whole characterization of Justin one's reign and especially Justinian Justinian will try to reconquer the West and it will reach its widest point since you know Constantine founded the new Rome it will reach its widest point under Justinian it won't last after him but that's when it reaches its widest point reconquering the West because they're looking at the beast that and here's the content of the that that it was because it was they're looking at the wasness they're looking at the past they want to return to their former glory and that is how the 490 after Christ's death ends full circle they're looking back at this horrible time when the brothers were fighting each other over the definition of God and they want to continue that fight and go back to those days and they consider that to be restoring the glory that was Rome and everything after this point is a replay of what you just saw that's why I just focused on these three verses the rest of the verses in Revelation 17 provide detail the verses prior to verse 6 and 8 in Revelation 17 you know tell you how it got that way everything in history is round robin back to the circle this is the primary rule in Aristotle's poetics that you come full circle by the end of the play and by the end of the play of the 490, whether it's measured from Christ's birth or Christ's death, this is how history goes. That's exactly what Ephesians 1 said in its own meter. And I did those videos seven years ago, so you can gorge yourself on them if you want in Vimeo. It's in Paul Meter GGS 10 and Paul Meter GGS 11. Those are the channel names. 
okay that is being reaffirmed and confirmed here which is really helpful for me to know because I drew that conclusion just by looking at Paul and I didn't I wanted more proof of it in Bible because how did I know what I was thinking was true okay well here's your confirmation it's as bald as it gets because we got the history we know what the history was we know what they thought we know what they did and all you needed was to you know combine it with the 490s it's going full circle and that's why John marks it this way now I bet when you heard Revelation 17 taught you didn't know any of this stuff why because the scholars don't know to do the meter why well I don't know why they don't know the meter because they knew of it since John Knox during the Reformation if not before and obviously the Jews used to know it and the Christians used to know it because look at how deftly Mark is I mean John is doing the meter on purpose and the other thing, of course, that you know is the words that we got in front of your face are the actual words that John wrote. And I think I'm going to end on that dramatic note because I myself am in a state of shock.